Okay, let's get started. To download UTM, we'll go over to install here, and then we'll click on Mac OS and download from GitHub. Download that file, then we'll head over to Metasploitable on SourceForge. You'll click the green download button and you'll download that zip file. Now we need to grab Kali Linux. We want to make sure we're grabbing the Apple Silicon ARM64 version. Click the little download arrow, let that download. And the final thing we need to do is go over here to Homebrew, click on the little clipboard to copy that, and we'll go over to our terminal and paste our command. I'll put that in the description box below. Let this run. Follow the prompts on screen. Now at the end of this, you'll see two commands that you need to enter for this to work properly. If you don't enter these two commands, it will not install properly and the commands will not work. So pay attention here. I already have it installed, so that's why it's not showing up for me. Okay, let's go ahead and try brew install QEMU. And we'll speed through this section. Go ahead and clear our terminal here. And then we'll CD over to our downloads folder. Go ahead and list out the files. And we need to go to the Metasploitable 2 Linux folder. So CD Metasploitable 2 Linux. Let's list out our files again. And we're looking for the metasploitable.vmdk. Now, as you can see, I've already created my QCAL2 file before, but we'll go ahead and create a new one. Okay, go ahead and type out this command, and I will also put this command in the description box below. Hit enter, let it run. It can take anywhere between 30 seconds to two minutes. So just let it finish. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and make sure our folder got created, or our file. And we can see we got metasploitable m1.qcal2. And if you're following the same naming convention, you should see the same file in your folder there. get this out of the way and bring up UTM. All right, now we're going to click on create a new virtual machine and we will click emulate and select other. We're going to click skip ISO boot. Now we're going to change memory from 4096 to 512. And then we'll go ahead and click continue. And we're going to change 64 gigs to 2. We'll click continue here. And now I want to click open VM settings. Let's go ahead and rename this. And then hit save. All right, from here, we'll go to QEMU and uncheck UEFI boot. Now let's go to IDE drive and we needed to delete this drive. Go ahead and delete. Click new. Then import. Now go into your Metasploitable folder and select the QCAL2 file you just created. Go back to network, and now we're going to go from shared network to host only network. This is important. Do not let this go online. Click save, and go ahead and click play to make sure this starts properly. Okay, things are looking good. Okay, at the login, type MSF admin, and it'll be the same for the password. Now, if we do IF config, we'll see that we have an IP address. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and minimize this. And now let's create our Kali Linux machine. So this time we're going to go to virtualize. 
because we're going to run a native architecture. We're going to select Linux. And we're going to go to where we downloaded our Kali Linux ISO. So in my case, it's going to be the downloads folder. We'll click continue. Let's change our CPU cores to two. You can leave it default. I'm just letting mine go a little higher. We can leave the storage the same. We'll click continue here. Like before, we'll do open VM settings and we'll rename this to Kali Linux. Click save. Now this time we're going to create a new serial device. This is important because there's a display issue when you run Kali in UTM. So I'll click save to make sure that's taken. As you can see, there's a little window behind the main window now. So now we're going to select install. And then we'll be using the little window to install. So I'll select English, United States, American English, We'll let the installer run here. Gonna go ahead and just name this Kali. We can click continue here or tab enter. We'll name the user, I'll put my name. Choose a super secret password, re-enter that twice. I'm in EST, so Eastern for me. And then click guided use entire disk and now you should see your virtual disk there we'll do all files in one partition finish partitioning to write the changes left arrow click enter to write the changes and again we'll let this install okay go ahead and just hit tab and enter This will take a minute to install, so we'll speed up the video at this point. Okay, let's go ahead and click continue to reboot our machine. Okay, so now we're back in the installer window. So let's go ahead and power down the machine. And then we're going to go into settings and delete the USB drive here. Click delete. And now you can see our vert IO drive is our main Kali drive. We'll click save. Now let's go back to settings. And this time we're gonna to go to network mode and we'll change share network to host only for the time being. Save again. And let's go ahead and run this. And I forgot we need to turn off the serial window. So let's go to settings one more time. And we're gonna right click on serial and remove device. Now click save and go ahead and start your Kali machine again. Hit enter here. And now go ahead and enter your username and password you set earlier. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and open a terminal window. We'll do IF config and we see we have an IP address. Let's open our other Metasploitable machine. So now both of our machines are running in host only mode, which means neither of them can connect to the internet, but they should be able to see each other. So let's go ahead and try and ping each of these machines. 
like ping 10.37.129.6 and we should get a reply. All right, that looks good. Let's go over to Metasploitable Machine real quick. All right, and if we type ping 10.37.129.7, we should get a reply back as well. Okay, that looks good. Now, see, if we try to ping Google, since we're in host-only mode, we can't reach the outside. So neither of these machines can reach the outside to talk. The metasploitable one is fine. You do not want that contacting the outside. But let's go ahead and change the settings on the Kali machine so we can run a quick update. So go back to settings. We're going to go to network. And we're going to change network mode from host only to shared network. Okay, so now if we run a ping, we do ping.google.com. We can see we get a reply. If we try to ping our Metasploitable machine, we can see it's unable to be reached. Okay, let's go ahead and shut this down now so we can reach our Metasploitable machine. So back to settings. We'll go back to network. And then we'll go back to host only. Okay, let's run a simple nmap against our machine. So we'll do sudo nmap dash sc dash sv. We're going to put the IP address of our metasploitable machine. And I'm not going to create a new file from this, so I'm just going to do very verbose. So we'll do tag VV. Enter my password. And we'll let this run. All right, let's go ahead and scroll up and see what we have. And you can see our nmap output was successful in contacting the Metasplitable virtual machine. And with that, you're running Kali and Metasplitable on an Apple Silicon chip using UTM only. I'm Adam. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the video. And if this video gets 50 likes, maybe I'll put out another one in less than a year's time. Anyways, if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section below. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.